My name is Jane Burns, and the topic that I'm going to talk about today is medical humanities, and this is a subject area of interest of mine. So I'm going to just start off with a little introduction. Medical humanities represents the intersection of the humanities, arts, cultural heritage, and healthcare, which is comprised of a variety of disciplines that explore the social, historical, cultural, and scientific knowledge, clinical practice, and healthcare policy. This representation has been a part of our cultural heritage in art, music, literature, folklore, and popular culture throughout time. At the core of these representations is the attempt to investigate and give meaning to experiences, narratives, representations of health and illness that are sometimes ignored by the biomedical sciences. Understanding and communication is central to this area. For example, if I were to ask a medical person to describe the human heart, they would probably say something like, it is a vital organ that pumps blood through the body and it keeps a person alive. However, when we say to someone, I love you with all of my heart, we're talking about something else, aren't we? So while we may be using the same words, we aren't always in the same context, or the same understanding. Now you could imagine getting that first picture on a Valentine's Day card. <laughs> Some would be in a lot of trouble. I want to highlight three areas where I think that libraries and librarians have a role to play in the area of medical humanities. And these are in research, educational, and engagement and support, data management, connecting and linking of content, alternative research platforms, and information narratives. Further development in medical humanities has been made possible with advances in digital technology, online contextualization, and the linking of data. Librarians in consultation with educators and researchers, and especially archivists, have a role to play in the development of the subject area. In particular, librarians involved in digital libraries and special collections can provide expert knowledge in the identification of primary source material that can facilitate research through the development of related collections. The range of researchers that will find contextualized information relevant and significant in the subject area of medical humanities is far more reaching than those involved in medical research alone. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, Let's have a few examples from the RCSI archive collection that I have selected with support from our wonderful archivist, Maeve Murphy. First up, we have images from the William Wallace collection. William Wallace was a, uh, a leader in dermatology research. In 1817, Wallace opened the first hospital in Dublin to investigate the numerous skin diseases that were afflicting the poor in the area. This was the first hospital of its kind in the British Isles. Now, I won't leave these images up too long because they are pretty gross, but they're also very beautiful in their detail. Many of the images in this collection have detailed annotations that describe the multiple facets about the patient. So we have their living conditions, their medical history, their exposure to other diseases, and so on. Having this kind of information, as well as a pictorial representation, is valuable for diagnostics. So rather than having a description of something being red and itchy, which could be everything from a pimple to leprosy, the images and the annotations have the notes and the information. The afflictions shown in these illustrations are quite graphic, and they are not ready recognizable to current practitioners due to the advancement of the work by Wallace. And these are considered to be eradicated, but they could come back. Considering that the images in this collection are rare, only, makes the, only enhances their research and pedagogical value. It was nearly 50 years after Wallace's death that the common camera came into existence. This type of material has huge significance, not only in the medical field of dermatology, but also for Irish social history. Next, I have an image from our Women in Medical History collection, and this is Emily Winford Dixon. In 1887, she was the first and only <coughs> female medical student. Dixon obtained the license of the Royal College of Surgeons and the Royal College of Physicians in 1891 
and graduated from the Royal University of Ireland in 1893. She was elected the first female fellow of RCSI in the same year. These appointments were not without controversy, but her experiences and the objects in the archival collection represent a range of research and teaching applications, including to, but not limited, to women in Irish medical history, history of RCSI, the social history and science, in, but particularly in the field of obstetrics, where Dr. Dixon spent most of her career. Unless I have a sample from the RCSI Medical Instruments Collection, RCSI holds a unique history, a new, unique place in history in surgery and medical education in Ireland since the late 1700s. They were pioneers, founders, and inventors of new surgical techniques and instruments. There are over 1,600 instruments, and it is the largest collection in Ireland. These instruments not only have medical history significance, but they also have applications in the fields of engineering, sciences, and Irish social history. What we see here is the instrument developed and used by Robert MacDonald when he attempted the first blood transfusion in Ireland nearly 150 years ago. Medicine and health are developing more and more in technical environments. It's now often referred to as Health 3.0. The move from paper-based uh, paper uh, record keeping is now being replaced with integrated electronic records. We have systems now like the IBM Watson, which is more closely associated with its status as a Jeopardy champion, but is now being used with Sloan Kettering Hospital. <coughs> Sloan Kettering is involved in the treatment of care of cancer patients. And part of this process is to find better ways of doing things. And part of this is the ingestion of massive amounts of data. This is far too difficult for any one person to analyze. But by using the power of Watson, it has the potential to be, make every doctor the best doctor in, that, in the world for taking care of that particular problem. The use of data in this way allows for the delivery of evidence-based medicine with analytic approaches to understanding cancer. Research in this area is growing at an exponential rate. Librarians have a role to play in this area in data capture, curation, and in the development of data management plans and data management development. By having data available in these formats, it allows for a range of online publications formats that would not be possible in traditional outputs. The skills we have in collation, contextualization of information, repository management and development makes us a natural player in this environment. <coughs> medical humanities is, significant, is a significant part of medical education and research. It also touches on so many other areas. As librarians, we support and engage in a range of research initiatives but I think where we really excel is in our skills to help others develop their information narratives. And this is a topic that I recently discussed with an academic oncologist. I asked him, did he think that this area of medical humanities would enhance the education and research in the field of medicine? And he said, absolutely. But where he saw this field having the largest impact was in the area of communication between patients and their doctors in particular when dealing with the patient narrative. And this is what he told me. Often the time arises when we shift from the, we, 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 sorry, often the time arises when treatment is no longer an option for patients and we shift from treatment to the appreciation of time. Sometimes the enjoyment of time in this most unencumbered way is our most useful teacher, our purest storyteller, and our most gentle healer. Thank you. <laughs>